Hi guys, it's Steph from iDriver Classic and I've got my binoculars handy because today we are on a safari and not just any safari, we're on a Citroen Safari hunting for the very letter spotted Citroen CX20, the Safari Edition, aka the base model. Now, we're going to go and hunt for this amazing Citroen, I think it's just over there, so let's go. Right, I've emerged from the bushes and on my hunt for a safari, I tracked down this awesome Citroen CX Safari. The CX was introduced all the way back in 1974 at the Paris Motor Show in France and was launched as the direct successor to the iconic Citroen DS, which for many is probably a far more recognisable sight than the slightly quirky CX that we've got in front of us here today. Now before I get telling you about this particular CX, I should probably explain the Safari bit. So you could get two estate models, which were either the Safari, which we've got here today. So plus, you get a big boot, but you only get five seats, or you could have gone for, excuse my pronunciation if it's incorrect, the Familial, which was the seven-seater saloon. A bigger option, but you did lose a bit of that boot space. Now both options were based on the longer CX Prestige chassis. The CX was predominantly manufactured just outside Paris and was made from 1974 to 1991. The car was also manufactured in Spain and Chile. Interesting. Nearly 1.2 million of these brilliant French cars were made, but they were never a massive hit in the UK for many reasons, large because of things like cost and stuff. So it's quite special to be taking out an original right-hand drive model today. And it's one of the last Series 1 models and was manufactured in 1985, just before the changeover to the Series 2 later on in 1985. Now, very little has been done to this car in the way of change. And aside from an engine rebuild and a new gearbox, this car largely remains as it left the factory in France in the mid 80s. The CX was a large front engine front wheel drive car and when launched in 1974 was received really well and so well in fact that the car then in 1975 went on to win European Car of the Year. Now the early cars weren't loved by everyone because of, lack of power because of the lack of power steering. So in 1976 Citroen stepped up and ensured all CX models had the power steering which it really did need. Now that ran off the same system as the suspension. Now it's particularly handy because um, the earlier models, in fact all of them, without the power steering were incredibly heavy which was partially because of the large front radial tyres and also the fact that the car carries 70% of its weight over the front wheels. It's also worth noting that the CX wasn't immediately available in the UK and that's because the right hand drive version wasn't introduced until 1975 so the year it won that award. Now not only is the car fondly remembered for winning European Car of the Year but it's also sometimes described as the last real Citroen and this is due in parts of the fact that Peugeot took over the company in 1976. Now the target market initially was the DS customer looking to upgrade and they loved the car so much that an impressive 132,000 of them were sold in 1978 alone and bearing in mind this wasn't a run-of-the-mill average budget car that's excellent news for Citroen. Now with fantastic te technology on board borrowed from the SM the customer base expanded merely beyond the DS customer looking for a new model into people impressed by the car itself. Now the car's unique shape is no surprise either. The design was created by auto stylist Robert Opron again apologies on pronunciation who also designed the ds the gs um the, C the cx was designed by citroen to perform well in aerodynamic drag something they were able to test due to the fact they had wind tunnel testing um and it was something they've been doing for quite some time now, as you'll see when we do a little bit of suspension demo for you guys, the car boasted hydro pneumatic integral self-leveling suspension, which meant that no matter if the car was fully loaded or not, or how many passengers you had, you got a consistently smooth and pleasurable driving experience. Now, as you'll see when we look at the dash on the walkthrough, it's a really unique setup in terms of there are no stalks, um, and it's basically so that the driver can reach everything from the steering wheel. And another interesting fact is that Citroen believes the driver should be in charge of when the indicators stop flashing, which is why there's no self-cancel on the indicators. I'm dreading forgetting that on the drive. Now, production came to an end in 1991, and the car was replaced by the XM in May 1989. They continued to make the CX estate until 1991, just because, really, there was no decent alternative to that. Um... 
Now, another thing to note before we before we head off on our test drive is, interestingly, this was one of the last big Citroëns. And with the gap in the market, Citroën did actually see sales decline, which never actually picked back up again. Now, the XM that it replaced the CX never saw the same level of popularity and it sold less than 400,000 units which actually is pretty disappointing now in today's video there's a lot to cover I've got loads of amazing stuff to show you but first of all I need to kick off with a chat with Cameron who you may remember from other videos including the P6 video and the Rolls Royce video and this is one of his new cars he only had it a few weeks um, and with less than 75 on the road Cameron gave me a call and said do you want to test drive it and I jumped at the chance because I love showing you guys something different and this is it. So let's go and catch up with Cameron and see what he has to say. So we're back with Cameron who you may recognise from the Rover P6 video and then he appeared in the Rolls Royce video and he became some sort of weird pinup because people kept messaging me <laughs> asking if he was single but he's nearly 25 now so he's almost dead in gay years. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's really Hashtag nasty. On the shelf. <laughs> it's all right. I'm a woman over thirty, so I've been dead for a while. Um, right. So, why did you buy this Citroen? Um, I needed a workhorse. Yeah. We had a Volvo 240 for a year. Mm -hmm. Crashed it in Belgium. They are as well built as you think they are. And how did you come out of that accident? Cause that's actually quite interesting. Fine. Just opened the door, walked away, left the car sadly, but they really are built like a tank. Then my other half had a whole mental breakdown about what sort of car to drive every day and went and bought a two and a half ton Rolls Royce. And I, Normal. Yeah. I decided to be a bit more pragmatic and I always wanted a Citroen CX. I wanted one as my first car, but my dad was like, oh, they're really problematic. Yeah. And I finally said, I'm going to have one. On paper, it makes a lot of sense. The worst thing I did was buy a restoration project. Yeah. As you know. And uh, we plodded on with that for about 18 months or two years and finally sold it and bought um, the estate version this is the safari because it's just that bit more practical and it was already fine I mean we got the other one sorted but just had a lot of trouble with mechanics and stuff mm -hmm. and decided let's just get rid of it while it still works <laughs> <laughs> That's so, so bad. Uh, <laughs> I shouldn't say that should I <laughs> so we bought this off mm. uh, our normal mechanic yeah so i knew it'd be good and touch wood she's been perfect so far i've done about two or three thousand miles yeah no problems at all and um, we've not yet been on your test ride so fingers crossed nothing goes wrong <laughs> it's uh, only happened a couple of times on a test drive you know that i've broken down well don't say never it was a citroen <laughs> cx basically a citroen cx is not a car it's a living thing and it sits in the garage and plots against you and as soon as you're going to say, oh, I'll take someone out for a ride in that, it yeah. says, no, <laughs> not having that. So, yeah, it's a bonkers car. It's crazy. Mm. They are problematic. They are a lot to look after. But if you once you get there and it's all running, yeah, they're just as reliable as anything, really. I mean, we've been to Italy and back in one with no problems, the last one. And yeah. we always fancied the estate because it's just got so much room. It's actually the seventh largest estate car to this day ever well it's bigger than the volvo 240 which well yeah that yeah was, that's what we had and, and yeah. the, the reliability of the volvo mm. was what attracted me to it except we paid like 50p and a snickers for it and in the time since we crashed it they yeah. worth a fortune so we ended up buying the seat they get nicked all the time you know really yeah it would have been quite welcome to mine. It wasn't that nice. <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> right. Oh, no, I can't stay because it saved my life. It, it was, yeah, exactly. Long story long. Yeah. It, it had two Volvo mud flaps at the back mm -hmm. and a bolt had fallen out the side of each. So they kind of oh. hung in like that. So we called it sad flaps. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, yeah, my that's God. It. It, gave, it gave its life to save us. Yeah, so. exactly. And I think that's one of the things that we covered when we did the Volvo video is that they are very... They are very sturdy. What's this like in terms of sturdiness? Do you feel like it's quite... What's? Have you ever watched a crash test? Have they done a crash test video for this? I'd rather not think about it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how I feel with the Metro. Uh, no, it, they, they actually handle the road su superbly well because yeah. of the suspension. A lot of people yeah. put them down because of the body roll. Yeah. And people misconstrue that as being bad handling, but it, it actually always maintains contact with the road. Yeah. And the, the weight distribution is so that 
it's all over the front wheels. Yeah. So it's a very peculiar handling car, uh, and it takes some getting used to, which is why we say, the uh, Citroen CX owners say, the first time you drive one, yeah. you won't want to drive it again. The second time you drive one, yeah. you never want to drive anything else. Right, we've been chatting for ages, so... Shall we start the car up and take it out for a drive? Could we swap seats? Yes, I think yeah? we should. Let's swap seats. <laughs> so, we've had a look around the outside of the car. It's high time that we had a look inside because this is probably one of the most special cars I've taken out because it's so different to anything else that I've tested. Um, mainly because I've never seen a dash set up like this. It's crazy. I'm going to show you this part in the next clip because... I really want us to get justification out of it because when you look at it, it's like nothing that you've ever seen. It's really, really different. Um, I'm not sure if I like it or not yet. You know when you see something totally different and you're not sure how you feel about it. Um, but in terms of your steering steering setup, so as you can see, now one of the most interesting things is, is the steering will always bring you back to centre. So we'll try and show you that while we're driving as well. This steering wheel is absolutely bonkers. Um, <laughs> not driven anything like this before. It kind of feels a little bit like an attempt at a space age vehicle, which I absolutely adore. I think it's quite cool. Um, it's just very different to anything that I've been out in before. Now, in terms of Citroen, they seem to be very forward thinking when they're putting this together, because as you see, when we look at this bit, there is an awful lot going on. You've got warning lights for all sorts. You've got trip clocks. You've got pretty much everything you need. And it's uh, it's a little bit different. But also, as well as that, you've got all the idea was that you've got all the controls that you need whilst driving within hands reach so you know kind of like some of your newer cars take your hand off you've got indicators over here with this everything you're supposed to be able to reach whilst you're driving so here we've got your indicators your horn your hazard i mean you need to take your hand off the wheel to use that um and you've got your wipers which i'll demo for you in a minute and over on this side so we'll bring you on over you've got the lights so again it's that you can hold on to that steering wheel and use those Again, you've got those and you've got the controls over here. Now, I'm going to take you down into the centre console. I want to show you some of this. Now, as I said, um, I don't know if I've mentioned actually, because this has been bought with the intention of doing up and tarting up a little bit. There are a few little bits that you need to be considerate of when we watch this video that aren't quite perfect. This being one of them, which is where the ashtray should have been, but some oaf that's owned the car before is mucked about with it which is a shame um you've got your radio again that fits nicely in i imagine this must have been an original or something fitted quite late after because it's you know it's got your um you've got your am and fm fine but you've got all these turn dials and stuff it's really nice um as per a lot of radios of this era these always always tend to break um got your air vents down here what i like to refer to as the cassette tape holder um you've got your um cigarette lighter now this is a little bit different so can you guys see that that's a headlight alert so that's been retrofitted um so it's just down there that's been retrofitted and allegedly it's a little bit uh temperamental but it does beat to let you know that the lights are on if you get out the car um and you haven't turned them off now down here we've got all your heater controls so you've got i mean it's very it feels very complicated for the era of the car and then over here the suspension which we're going to demo for you in a minute um all the controls for that around here and you've got your handbrake here as well so there's a lot going on um but it is a nice car. It is a very nice car. Now, before we head off, um, the last one thing I want to show you is the door handles. Now, I've talked about how things are a little bit different in here. Now, this is almost like the trigger of a gun. So, if you come in, I can show you that. So, you watch. Pull that. And that opens the door for us there. Now... What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start the car and uh, start the car up. I'm going to uh, I'm going to turn the ignition on because I want to show you this. And uh, but first I'm going to show you the wipers because if you're a Hubnut fan, no doubt you absolutely love a wiper. And I need to show you this one because it's pretty cool. So let's get those wipers going. So let's talk wipers. I'll put the ignition on for you. Um, and again, we're back at this lovely little molded plastic area now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you so we've got this is you've got 
two speed do love a two speed wiper and um, i'm going to ask cameron now to point it at the screen for you so you can see the wipers in action so we pull this little plastic lever towards us for the wash as well so if you're a hub nut fan you're going to absolutely love this how good is that Oh, I like that. Down a speed. Turbo speed. Love that. Right, we're gonna swap that off now and uh we'll uh we'll show you the um and we'll show you the dash here because it's really cool and uh then we'll get the car started up and take it out for a drive. Now this is a bit zany, I've popped the ignition on so that it lights up a little bit, but let me show you. So over here we've got the clock. And uh, see this over here, so I'm going to zoom in show you. Hold on. That is your mileage. How insane is that? It literally moves when you drive, almost like a roll of film. So we're going to show you that while we drive, hopefully. Um, it's uh, very bizarre. And all these buttons up here that look like they're uh, part of a spaceship setup, that's all your warning lights. There's quite a lot going on, actually. Um, zoom in here. This is your mileage and your trip clock. Over here, you've got your rev counter. So you see that zero? That's your rev counter. So that literally spins around when you're driving. Um, over here, we've got fuel. So you can see where we're sat on the fuel. And then to the right-hand side, you've got your oil level. Apparently, that is a little bit temperamental. But look, the car's not exactly a spring chicken, so we wouldn't expect everything to be dead on perfect. Now, I think it's high time that we started the car up so you can hear how she sounds. So we've had a good look around this car. Now, I think it's a really special car. It's something that I've not done before and it's real, I feel like it's been really thoughtfully designed and really thoughtfully made. And I hope that some of the stuff that I've shown you has really conveyed that because I think it's a car that you're probably not gonna see on the regular, unless you own one, of course. And for me, one of the really important things is to show you guys different cars and to show you how special that they are. Now. I could have shown you all of that and I hope that I've really done that justice but I also want to start the car up as well so you can hear how she sounds so we're going to turn that key and um, I've been told I can uh, rev the car so I can show you how she sounds so it sounds quite cool now we're going to uh, use our little electric window uh, buttons down here no doubt I'll press the wrong one hey so it's quite a cold day but I'm going to give it a rev so you can hear how she sounds so that sounds really smooth, really nice. Now I'm going to buckle up and uh, we'll take it out for a drive and I'll tell you what I think. Right, I've been driving this car now for about 10 minutes and uh, it's, uh, I got promised it was going to have really rubbish handling but look, I'm a marina driver. I am used to handling being a bit weird on a car and you know what, I absolutely love this. It's fun to drive, um, it's very smooth. So as we drive around the roads of Great Britain, which are well, they look like the face of the moon to be honest uh, they're absolutely terrible the car is handling it and taking it all in its stride it's quite nippy it's straight off the lines and uh, it's a really weird relaxing experience which isn't what i always look for in a car because if unless i'm slightly on edge i feel myself start to drift off to sleep and to be honest this almost feels like i'm sleepwalking down the road which is really strange because the seats are so comfortable the steering position is so natural and because of that suspension and because it's all beautifully set up i'm just gliding along the road like a swan on a pond and it is the weirdest experience now i was promised that the driving was going to be a bit weird because um, when you turn the wheel let me try and show you it's not going to show you there because the road that i'm driving down is quite straight um i was promised that because the steering wheel always tries to right itself to center um which is a bit of a quirk of the cars themselves it's not a particular fault on this car it's that it can feel a little bit weird when it's driving it almost feels like a battle of wheels as the car tries to kind of bring you back round to straight but to be honest as i said i drive a marina i think i know what weird handling feels like and this is actually really really nice and i got told that <laughs> i got told it was going to take me two drives to fall in love with this car but honestly i'm already in love i think it's a beautiful car it's I can see why they go for good money and I can see why they were expensive at the time because they're well specced up on your technology and it's a really nice car to drive. I think probably because, especially in this country, people maybe weren't as au fait with Citroen, especially in the 70s, as you know, they thought, probably thought Citroen thought 2CV. They were 
expensive beautiful luxury vehicles like this it probably you know it probably wasn't the right time for it but honestly great so far so as we drive along we're going for a nice little amble down these country roads um i guess there's a lot of factors that make this a really nice car it's not something i've i've not driven a lot of citroens i took i think it was a bx i took out last time which was a well-loved example and it really showed and it kind of drove like that too to be honest because the gearbox was a bit iffy whereas this car is on what 90,000 miles it's a really really nice car to drive it's beautiful to handle and i feel like there's a lot of components that make this a really good choice i mean yeah it's not the cheapest car to buy but number one it's really cool it looks really cool it's fun to drive like it's a nice fun car to drive in there it's quirky you've got your colored dash you've got your gorgeous velour seats in an attractive shade of check beige you've got a lot of quirky little things going on the dash itself is really well specced up um, you know you've got all your controls that you would get on your modern that you actually need you don't really need those sat navs in the middle of the screen you can just use your phone or whatever else you know there are workarounds for these sorts of things you don't need all the inbuilt bluetooth everything you need is on this car it's absolutely exceptional it's beautiful to drive it's quiet enough as we drive along it's gliding along the roads there's no rattles there's no shakes there's no knocks um and it actually feels very sturdy i mean i've never really heard amazing things about citroen you know people don't i've not really heard apart from you know your iconic citroens like your citroen 2 cvs and your DSs. I've not heard people rave about Citroëns the way that you hear them rave about Fords and VWs. And you know what? That is such a pity because this car represents good value for money. It's a great driving experience. It's, for me, it's maybe not a cult classic, but I'm not a fan of these big cult classics. I like some of the underdogs of the classic car world, and this is definitely one of them. And today's driving experience has just been really nice. Like, it's been really good fun, and I've really, really enjoyed it. It's a beautiful, beautiful car. And if you own one of these, you're really lucky because it's just so nice to drive. It'd be lovely to take on the commute, um, especially with some of the roads I have to go on. Now, I hope that I've done this car justice today because I've really tried to show you everything that I can show you. Um, I've shown you all the dash, I've shown you under the bonnet, I've shown you the inside, uh, around the outside. Um, so I really hope that I've done it justice because this car deserves every nice thing that's said about it. It's a beautiful car to drive, it's a laugh, it looks cool, and I give it 10 out of 10. So I really hope you've enjoyed the video as much as I've enjoyed driving it because actually this is i would say this is one of the cars i've enjoyed driving the most it's been uh, it's been really good fun now until next time um i'm going to say goodbye to you guys now but as we all know we're in the midst of uh coronavirus wherever you are in the world you're probably affected so i just wanted to say i hope that you're all well i hope that you're all staying safe and uh, i hope everything's okay your end um it's a very strange time at the moment so wherever you are hold up watching this video i hope that you're as well as you can be now until next time, take care and drive safely.